and it was a little light. Dark red. There's a bright flashing green or yellow. It's a well-known booty fact that nobody can tie a bowling when they're being watched. That's why I'm going for a round turn and two half hitches. <laughs> you coward. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh... So you haven't answered the question yet as to why you're even tying a piece of line to the anchor. Oh, we didn't have time in um, the hangar to inspect the anchor um, or do anything with the anchor. Yeah. So uh, Beverly's mum's coming later on. So we've got a few hours, two, so we're going to have to get on with it and sort it out. Okay. Uh, hang on a sec. You're not, you're not holding the chain? Uh, um, holding the anchor and the chain. Okay, go. Let's just go. I'd say it weighs a ton, but I know exactly what it weighs. <laughs> right, so um, what we've got to do is the previous owner drilled a hole in the shank of this anchor, which probably isn't all that great for its structural integrity, but it's a big, big, beefy shank. So we have great hopes for it. Um, the pin, the securing pin, goes through this to secure it to the boat and the bow roller, but because they've done this and they haven't treated the hole properly, we have to do it every year because it rusts. They've taken the galvanizing coating off. So what we're going to do is we're drilling the um, thing with a brass brush so it doesn't affect the steel, but it does take the rust off. And the idea is that once we get this back to shiny metal and best, we might put some rust preventative on it and then it's getting a, a thorough coat of cold galvanizing spray to protect it as best we can. It's just a little maintenance job and we've got to do it. The other maintenance job will be, once this is done, hose off and scrub the chain and then we'll go over it visually and check it and if there's any areas of the chain where the galvanizing looks thin, we'll cold galvanize that too. Well, that seems to have cleaned up really nicely. The, uh, the rust has come off, so now it's a case of um, put, getting some cold galvanizing spray on it, a good couple of coats of it, and that will hopefully be good for the season. Well, we've arrived in Carrick and um, our principal reason for being here is what we like to call the, the royal visit, my mother will be coming aboard. Um, she, it's a bit of an adventure for her, she's 83, she's a little bit frail, she prefers to be known as very, very mature. And she likes to come aboard and just enjoy being on the boat and my aunt comes with her and it's their day out. So the boat has been prepped and it looks all nice for her because there will be an inspection, <laughs> it's just the way these things work. And uh, it's the reason for our visit, so we're just going to get on with it and do that. Well, it's the day after the royal visit. I'm glad to say she had a great time and it was a success, so everybody's happy. Um, it's a different day today. We had hoped to leave today and hopefully we still shall. It's very blowy out. And it also justifies the reason that we like to do mirror on the hammerhead here rather than the visitor's pontoon opposite. We always ask if we can come to the hammerhead because just the shape of the marina entrance, if the wind's running from the right direction, we get waves coming up and they just roll up the visitor pontoon and it just hobby horses the boat a bit. Whereas over here in the Hammerhead, you're out of the way of those waves because they sort of go over that way, not over this way. So we're nice and comfortable. But in spite of the wind, we've got work to do. Uh, we've re-galvanised um, the chain. Well, when I say re-galvanised, we've used cold galvanising spray, which isn't the same as hot dip galvanising. But we're hoping it acts as like a lanode for the chain and uh, just gives it some protection that the, the, the galvy comes off first before the chain suffers any problems. We've inspected the chain, we can't see any split wells, we, can't, we don't have any big flakes of rust or anything like that, there are no deformed links, um, the shackles look to be uh, in good order, they don't have any deformed links, they're not bent, they're not cracked. So as far as we can see, everything looks good for another year's use of this. I think when we get in this autumn though, we will replace the shackles and just put new ones on and that will be that. But job today, 
get the chain back into the locker and then I think we've got other jobs to do, more provisioning which we didn't finish in Bangor. So it's going to be a busy day. Well, <laughs> Salty Lass fooled us again. As you can see it's a lot more windy out here than what it seemed aboard. Aboard we hardly even noticed this but out here it's quite obvious that there's a bit of a gale going on. Um, so we've got the chain, the galvanising has dried, we're going to take it back into the anchor locker and that will be this side of the way. I'm very pleased with how it's come out. Uh, I've left a little space around things like the five metre marks where the chain markers are. Um, but really what I want this stuff to do is to act as like an anode for the chain. If it wears off during use, I'm not really that bothered. So it'll be a bit of fun today getting this back in. But we need to get started, so let's get on with it. Well, um, <laughs> as you can see, we're not putting the anchor chain away just yet. Gainer's made a suggestion which is, it's cold, let's go put more togs on. I think it's a very good idea. Well, I'm on my own. Um, Gainer has gone to get some resupply for the boat. If you look over that way, you can just see the, the peak roof of the entrance to Sainsbury's, the supermarket. So that's one of the great things about Carrick, the supermarket is right at the top of the ramp. If we were at higher tide, you'd actually be able to read the sign outside the door. But we're about half tide, so you can't. My job is to sort out this loose plate that's up forward that holds the anchor roller. Now, it's 20 years old. The wooden blocks that were behind it have gone. As simple as that. I wish Bavaria had made the fiberglass thicker than they did, but they didn't and it's still there so it can't be too bad a job. Maybe if the temperatures were warmer or if we get somewhere with warmer temperatures I could maybe look at laying fiberglass up in there to thicken that area and give it more strength which is my preference is what I'd like to do. But given the temperatures we've got at the minute and the weather we've got at the minute my solution is to take this piece of decking that I've got over here and drill it to, to, to take the bolts put it up there it will get us through the season. It's something like pine or spruce decking it's a it's the sort of thing that people walk around on all summer long. Um, it sits outside for years at a time. I know it often gets treated, but I think it will get through six months whether we treat it or not. And that's the key point here. Uh, as long as we're okay for the sailing season, we'll be fine. We do not allow our anchor roller to take the weight of the anchor. So we use snubbers for that. We have two snubbers. We put on a snubber and we put on a backup snubber so that the weight of the anchor is never on the bow roller itself. So the chain, the, the, the plate that the roller attaches to it is never under strain, nor is the roller at the end. It's only used for lifting chain and that's all. And that's all we want it for. So I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get the tools out. With a bit of luck, it'll all go to plan. It'll all go beautifully. Who knows? <laughs> it might. Right, well, I've um, taken my measurements and in best salty last tradition, I've been using the cornflakes box to make a template. So this is the shape I need to cut out with two 10mm holes for the bolts to go through here and here. is in. Um, I had to make up a, a sort of strange tool using the impact driver, wobbly bits, um, bits out of one tool kit and another tool kit. Basically it was like a restaurant we had in recently where it was an a la carte menu and they seemed to have this great talent that if you picked a dessert and a main you like you'd hit the uh, starter and if you picked a starter and a main you like you'd hit the dessert. So this is a bit like this. It sort of like required picking like three different tools from three different toolboxes because no one toolbox had everything you wanted, a bit like that menu. So it's in, it's secure and now all I have to do is test it out and make sure that it's nice and firm when I lift the anchor. So that'll be my next little job. Um, it's as windy as hell up forward, I won't be filming it, but you'll just have to take my word that it works. <laughs> well the shopping's done, but the only thing I'm ready for is a really, really nice soak in a bath. I feel wrecked. Right, so we're not heading off tonight then? No, you've done the anchor, I've done shopping, and I'll be I'll be honest, I'm bushed. Alright, well we'll stay here tonight, we'll have nice showers, baths and luxuries like that. Oh yeah, Get, crack, crack the wine out girl! 
going to say we've got half a bottle of uh, white to finish off. Yeah, you can oh. start with that luxury. But what, right have we just, what have we just topped up? Ah, food's all topped up. Baskets all topped up. And the wine locker's topped up. Oh, yeah. It's looking a bit packed in there. So we've got two boxes of wine and two bottles of wine. That'll have to do us. That should get us at least the mouth of Belfast lock. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's my favourite time. I'll go for it then. And remember the ignition button. Well, it's a bumpy night here in Belfast Lock. We're moving back over to the other side because we have an appointment in the morning. And uh, although sailboats and schedules don't exist in the same universe, we don't really have a lot of choice because the boat's being lifted for a clean and an anode change, isn't it? It certainly is. So in spite of the weather being absolutely awful, as it's been it's been blowing a real hooly all day, but had gusts up four six, four seven out in the open sea. It's a wee bit more sheltered here in the loch. Uh, it's dropped to about four five, but the sea's still quite lumpy, isn't it? It's quite lumpy, and I can tell you now, it is it's bitterly bitter. cold. Absolutely Lately bitter. bitter. So. Um, but that's the thing about sailing in the north. Um, <laughs> the bullions are an absolute essential. Yeah, get your thermal gear on. Uh, with it being bumpy and me being forward at crew today, I have brought the short strap. It's one metre long and um, it goes on the lifelines. But um, hopefully I'll not need it. Um, we've got pretty much the sail same configuration going back as we had coming we've got a double reef in the jenny and we've got three reefs in the main so the main is really set up as our storm reef um, that's what it is it's about a quarter of our seal area and uh, I think I need to do crewing things excuse me well Beverly moving away from the steam well Beverly and I are anchored at Ballyhome Bay and um, I was on the helm today and um, when we were very close to Carrick I had oh, a real big major wobble and it was just like oh, oh, I don't know what I'm doing but I've got to just sort of like first of all you know just allow yourself to do that because sometimes you know it's hard when you think you've got to be in control all the time just to sort of like say okay I'm not feeling the best you know and sometimes when I release that emotion it just washes over me and I'm okay again but when I sort of like try and struggle with it it, it lasts for ages you know it's sort of like one of those things it's one of the reasons that women like to have a good cry they just release all that pent up motion and then it's gone and then they can get on with it but I had this really big wobble and I just sort of like just just went with the wobble and then I was fine yeah I, I realistically I was just nervous you we know we didn't do a lot of filming out no because uh, the sea state was quite bad um, and also it was quite dark <laughs> Beverly was very good today. She um, produced an episode, so that's up for the Thursday coming. So that was good. So we got that done, but it just meant that we were leaving a little bit later than I'd wanted to. Um, so we've actually anchored in the dark. This is the second time we've ever anchored in the dark. The first time, the very first day we've got the boat. But now at least we have a vague idea of what we're doing. I think it's the third time. It wasn't particularly bright in Lauren Lock when we did it there. Maybe, but today it was really dark. Get the tea on. Yeah, it's on.